Hi, in this video let's take a look at another electronic load I built recently. This one here uses two IXTK 90N25L2 linear MOSFETs and can dissipate more than 400 watts continuously with a maximum current sink capability of more than 100 amps. I did a couple of videos using one of these linear MOSFETs to demonstrate their superior performance when operating in linear region a while ago. And I will put links to these videos below so you can take a look if you haven't watched them before. Here's a brief look at the datasheet for the IXTK90N25L2 if you haven't seen this before. And as you can see here we have a VDSS of 250 volts. That means that you can use this to uh, make an electronic load up to 250 volts. And it has a uh, maximum current a drain to source current of 90 amps continuously and of course if you pause that that can uh, go much higher depending on your temperature of the uh, of your device. So the maximum power dissipation is rated at 960 watts per MOSFET and if you look at the safe operating area uh, figure here uh, highlighted you will see that the example given is a uh, with a VDS of 250 volts and uh, the drain to source current of 2.3 amps operating at a case temperature of 75 degrees maximum uh, the total power dissipation can be uh, made to at least 575 watts for a pulse duration of 5 seconds so and so you can see that based on the uh, specifications we can easily achieve the 400 watts and 100 amps figures I mentioned earlier using two of these MOSFETs. In fact the main limitation here is our heat sinks capability, uh, ability to remove the heat fast enough. And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, using a pure copper heat sink you should be able to operate this electronic load at the even higher dissipation level. But for short durations for example, just a few seconds at a time, you can easily dissipate more than one kilowatts using this setup. Now before we take a look at the actual build, let's quickly review what the circuit looks like. And in fact the circuit I'm using here is uh, almost identical to the circuit that I used during my previous tests. The main difference is that instead of using one, um, I used two sets of the uh, identical circuit. Each set is operating independently from each other, except that the control voltage feed in here uh, is tied together. So in essence, the current sync capability is doubled from my pr previous setup. Again, both op amps used here are LT1636 uh, micropower rail-to-rail -rail op amps. And uh, the current sensing resistors here um, used is actually 1.5 milliohm because it's it's not a 75 milliohm because it's a uh, 50 amp and 75 milli volt uh, current shunt. So we'll talk uh, about this in a little bit more detail uh, later. Okay so now let's take a look at uh, the whole circuit setup. And to show you the whole thing I, I'm gonna hold this uh, camera by hand so it might be a little bit shaky. But uh, as you can see here, we have a two path of this current sink and they are virtually identical. So uh, let's take a look at the upper part again. This is the uh, gate and this is the drain, this is the source. Okay, so we use this very thick uh, copper wires. Basically each of these are capable of carrying at least 100 amps and go through this current shunt. And uh, you see this uh, uh, very thin wires coming from these sense terminals. These are basically going to the op amps, which is underneath here. Now, uh, of course, I will show you that after uh, this. And um, one problem I had is, uh, you know, because of the uh, the thickness of the wire, and I didn't have, I didn't bother to get uh, appropriate terminals. But uh, soldering is actually quite difficult, so. Uh, you know, as you can see here, it's not as pretty as a job, but I did have a uh, 120 watts uh, soldering iron, so managed to, uh, you know, to, to solder it uh, reasonably well. Um, so these two basically then, you know, they're 
if you notice that the, the actual combining point is at the end of this uh, current chance. Okay, so basically these two are uh, independent. And now the voltage, the control voltage comes in from these uh, two banana plugs. And uh, because we are operating at such low uh, control voltage, uh, in fact, if you wanted to build this automatically uh, using some microcontrollers, you actually will need to have a uh, uh, amplifier uh, in front of this uh, this current sensing resistor to make it a reasonably higher voltage, so you can control it reliably. But because I have a uh, voltage standard, and uh, I can actually bypass that because I can just uh, you know put a very stable uh, a few millivolts here, and I can control the, um, the the current flowing through. Now, given the setup, because I have a two 50 amp 75 millivolts current shunts here, so the control voltage would be uh, corresponds to one millivolt per uh, 1.33 amps. So for every millivolt of control voltage I add on here, the current sink would be able to sink. Uh, 1.33 amps, so which we'll see this uh, relationship when we conduct our testing. Now let me uh, just briefly take the cover, uh, the, remove these two screws and show the circuit underneath. And there really isn't too much, but oh, before I uh, do that, so here is actually the, uh, the fan controller that I built earlier, and basically I have this uh, two thermistors uh, right pressed onto the uh, the MOSFET so that when the uh, you know when the temperature exceeds certain threshold the fan would be turned on and uh, the fans I use are actually the server uh, fans as you can see here they are actually really noisy and uh, so I try to you know keep them uh, off as long as possible okay so let me remove these uh, screws and we'll take a look And now with the screws removed, you can see uh, I have this DC to DC converter. Basically, I use a uh, 19. Uh, uh, I'm operating these op amps at uh, roughly 19 volts, and uh, so the voltage coming in is 19 volts. But because of the fan, is uh, 12 volts. So I used a DC to DC converter to uh, step down the uh, the voltage to 12 volts. That also supplies my sensor controller board. So here basically, you know, the circuit is really simple. We have just uh, two op amps. And so the signal comes in here uh, are from this two sets of wires. Basically, this goes to one from this uh, left side of the uh, current shunt and the other set from the right side of the current shunt. And uh, so that was about it. And also we have this uh, fan, uh, you know, the thermistor sensor wires going to the different MOSFET. So Without further ado, let me uh, put this back and uh, we will use that to test a couple of uh, power supplies to see its capability. And here's our experiment setup. Basically the control voltage is inputted from this uh, uh, current standard. Right now I set it to uh, millivolts mode so that I can fine control it uh, down to one microvolts. Of course, we uh, we're going to only be interested in the millivolt range today. And uh, the first power supply I'm going to test is this uh, Aztec uh, model that you saw before. And one thing interesting about this is it has a it has a 3.3 power rail that is capable of outputting 80 amps max. So we're going to see uh, you know that's the rail that we're interested in. So for that, I have the setup here. Uh, basically, I made these two cables, and each has a six, uh, 16 gauge wires parallel together. And uh, so we use this 150 amps uh, bullet type connector to connect to our electronic load like that. And uh, so then I can, you know, basically. Uh, hook this directly to the, oh, you can't see here, okay, so 
so now that is connected. And uh, for that, I also actually have a, a, a kilowatt watt meter so that uh, we can also see uh, instead of me me measuring the output uh, not output, instead of me measuring the uh, current shunt uh, voltage using this multimeter, we can also have a reading of the, uh, the power dissipation on the primary side from power supply under load. So, but of course there's going to be some you know inefficiencies of the power supply, but you will see the rough number. So now I'm plugged in, in the uh, power supply and as you can see here, uh, sorry, that's the kilowatt. We don't want to see that. We want to see, uh, yep, so now it's uh, dissipating roughly 16 watts. Okay, so now let me turn on my electronic load and uh, make sure that everything is set to zero. Okay, so now there's nothing should be going on. Yeah, so as you can see, we're still drawing 16 watts, okay? So now let me put this uh, two millivolts uh, mode and I only need to measure one of the uh, uh, my current shunt because those two are identical so now let me crank up the, the load and we'll see um, how does the power supply would uh, be able to take the current so now we gonna let's start uh, by just one millivolts so remember, for every millivolts we take, right? So it's a one. It roughly translates to 1.33 amps. Okay. So two, three, four. No problem. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, okay, so look, so this is a 10, and uh, so right now it's about uh, 13 amps, we'll do 20, okay, 30, interestingly, I'm not sure you can hear, uh, the, actually the switching power supply now started to have a little bit of uh, um, audible sound but uh, let's quickly measure that output from the uh, switching power supply to see if it's still working correctly so this is um, yeah no problem still 3.38 volts so that's probably just a normal operating uh, characteristics of that switching power supply now we're dissipating uh, the primary side is uh, 170 watts so and uh, and this thing is barely warm because the the fan is not kicked off yet. Kicked off yet. So now let's uh, uh, change that to uh, to four. Let's see how what's the millivolts here. We can calculate that uh, voltage drop. Sorry about that. So we're at about 40 millivolts. So that would be, uh, let's see, would be around 50 amps. Uh, no, yes, 50 amps. Okay. So 225 watts, and let's go even higher. Now the uh, the fan of uh, the electronic load started kicking off. And you can see that uh, it's, uh, uh, but these are still not that warm yet. So right now we're dissipating about uh, 50, so that would be 65 amps, okay? So we can even go higher. Now it's 332 watts on the primary side. We're under 496. Okay, so right now, what we're doing here is uh, basically we're right now dissipating 100 amps uh, th through this uh, power, through this dynamic load. And uh, that actually would have exceeded 
our maximum current allow allowed current on this power supply here because that's only rated at uh, uh, 3.3 volts and 80 amps. Okay. So as you can see here, we are still holding up re reasonably well, and um, so in fact, this has a lot of uh, redundancy. A lot of uh, well, not redundancy. A lot of uh, margin built into it. So right now, this is actually outputting 100 amps at three volts. Not a problem at all. So this is our first test of the uh, power supply. And now I'm just gonna dial back down the the current. Okay. So now the current dialed down back to zero, and you can see that uh, the power dissipation goes back to 16 watts. Let me uh, unplug these, and these do get a little bit warm because of the high current. Um, let's see. So the fan actually you know, went down. Yeah, this is uh, actually pretty hot, uh, but you know, in real operations, these would be in a uh, place where you have airflow over the, the, the heat sink. Okay, so that's our first power supply. So the second power supply we're interested in is this one. This is a HP from an HP server, and if you can see, this one actually is really beefy. It's a 12 volts, 65 amps, okay? So that's actually um, exceeded the capability of our, our this, uh, um, electronic load but nevertheless we can kind of see uh, you know how this electronic load behaves when we are dealing with this kind of a high load so for that I'm gonna hook this up and take my thermocouple and to just to make sure that everything is still operating within the uh, design range and uh, we'll get started okay so now I hooked up this uh, the second power supply and let me first just start it up. And it's a little bit noisy. And uh, let's see what the output voltage is. And it's a uh, 12.5 volts. So let me uh, hook up the electronic load. Let me just put it here. And the negative is on this side. Positive is on the other side. Yeah. There we go. Oh, in fact, let let me uh, uh, unplug this. Plug this onto the the kilowatts, so we can see what the power consumption is when this thing kicks off. Okay, let me just uh, arrange it like that, so we can see it. So now let me start this again. And this is not hooked up securely. Okay, here we go. So now it's drawing about uh, 20 uh, watts when idle. Okay, so now let's uh, start our electronic load again. We'll give it a... Um, uh, let's do 1 millivolts. So it's uh, 1.33 amps, remember our 1 millivolt to 1.33 amp uh, conversion. So let's just verify that. Uh, hang on, just one second. Yep, so that's roughly 1.33. And then we're gonna start 2, 3, 4, yeah, let's uh, just, uh, let me see, 4 now. Roughly four, okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's do right now. It's about thirteen amps. Okay. So, so there's some discrepancy between these two. Uh, uh, it's roughly the same. So let me actually just get rid this off the the way. So right now we're joined about the. Uh, 13 amps, so it's roughly 150 watts, there about. And uh, let's uh, keep going. 
so now we want to do, we double that, okay? So now we're going, um, Here. So now we're drawing about uh, 33 amps. 12 volts, 33 amps. Okay. And uh, let me uh, actually change the scale a little bit. Okay, so 12 volts, 33 amps. Let me just briefly measure the uh, temperature of uh, our transistor, I mean our MOSFET back there. So right now it's about uh, 66 degrees. So we still have a little bit of margin we can, we can uh, you know, push this. So now we can increase it uh, 1.5 amp at a time. Let's do, let's take it up to uh, 1.5. So now we're drawing roughly. Uh, 25 milli, there, so it's 25 millivolts, and remember it's 1.33 amps. So that's roughly, um, I don't have a calculator here, but it's uh, roughly 30 some amps, okay? So we're approaching 400 watts maximum uh, power dissipation. And as you can see here, we can, we can take a reading of the, uh, the MOSFET here. And we're doing reasonably well. So we're probably, I would say, is under the same uh, kind of uh, thermal It rose up a little bit, 73 or 72. So we can still push it a little higher. And uh, let's do a... Uh, so now we are actually uh, drawing 330. So this thing is gonna be... So we're drawing four, 45 amps, okay? 45 amps, and uh, so it's way above uh, 400 watts now. And so now you, you can see that the temperature is 85 degrees, so we probably can't, shouldn't be running this for very long. So now I'm going to dial it back down here. But it's still, you know, respect, it's still okay. So let's dial it down. So what this tells you is that this actually can uh, take a very, very high uh, short term, very, very high pulse current. So let's uh, verify that. Let's just turn it off here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the, the uh, voltage standard and I'm going to actually set it to a very high pulse current so that we can start it briefly and uh, see how that works. Okay. So let's. Uh, let the fan cool the system down first. So for the last experiment, let's try to push the uh, limit of this electronic load. And as I mentioned earlier, the, these mo linear MOSFETs are extremely uh, robust. So they can withstand uh, the rated power dissipation as long as you have the, uh, the case temperature under control. So for a short period of time, you know, even, if, even though our uh, aluminum heat sink is not able to dissipate uh, that much heat um, for continuous use, we can certainly verify that we can dissipate over 500 watts per, um, per linear MOSFET in this configuration. So for that what I'm going to do is because this power supply is rated at 12 amps, uh, eight, uh, sorry 12 volts 85, 84 amps. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I'm going to set 
this voltage standard to 60 millivolts, which means uh, that when we turn this on, this uh, circuit would be dissipating about, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 78, eight, 79, 80 uh, amps. So that would be very close to the maximum power this uh, power supply can deliver. And, uh, and I want you to concentrate on this uh, kilowatt power meter because this kilowatt is rated for uh, 1000 watts. So we can briefly exceed 1000 watts with no problem. But you, I wanted you to, to watch this number. So you will see that that jumps to over 1000 uh, um, watts momentarily. And all the heat is actually dissipate, being dissipated in this electronic load. So I wanted to concentrate on that. And now let's... Uh, Turn on the, uh, the voltage standard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And uh, so for that brief moment, and you can see that, okay, so even that kicks off the uh, this uh, fans immediately because of the, uh, the extremely high current, uh, high power dissipation. So that we actually dissipated uh, about uh, 1,000 watts within with this two linear MOSFETs, and we can try that again. You know, so this is highly repeatable. On, off. So each time you can you can do this about uh, you know three or four seconds as long as your uh, you do not exceed the temperature of the MOSFETs, they are safe. So let's take a look at what the, uh, the power supply does when we turn on that uh, the load. So right now it's uh, 12.5 volts, so let me turn on the load. So you can see that it drops uh, first and then the voltage quickly stabilizes back to its rated volts. Uh, rated voltage driver. So anyway, so now um, I hope you enjoyed the video because uh, this is really good uh, uh, linear. This is really good electronic load for testing your linear power supplies, your switching power supplies, and uh, things like that. And uh, this thing it actually is better than a lot of the. Uh, oh, let me turn off this uh, noisy power supply here. So this is actually better than a lot, a lot of the electronic loads you can uh, get on the market because you can, you know, dissipate so much heat into this, so much power into this electronic load. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.